minus 48 hours. Check inspection at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Some 83 cars from across the country. Cruzineers for maximum adherence to safety standards. Then six hours of practice, Friday and Saturday, before Sunday and the famed Road America 500. Road America's track is four twisting miles, three lanes wide, knifing through the rolling Kettle Moraine section of northern Wisconsin. The winner will lap the four-mile track 125 times, average better than 84 miles per hour, and take just under six hours to complete the punishing 500-mile run. At stake, points for the Road Racing Championship of the United States for drivers and manufacturers. In the manufacturer's class, Cobra creator Carol Shelby, whose Cobras were soundly trounced by Ferrari at the start of the season, has realized his ambition. Beat Ferrari. Yes, uh, mathematically, we've already won it. Uh, Ferrari won every race, the first uh, five positions. They couldn't catch us. They would lack a couple of points. And I can't see them beating us in one race, much less uh, uh, in both of them. Drivers' Championship, with just today's race and one more in the series, is far from decided. Bob Holbert from Warrington, Pennsylvania, has a slim four-point lead over Californian Don Wester going into today's action. Holbert driving a Cobra today, Wester his trusty Porsche. As he sees it... Well, Mr. Holbert, I think, is probably the top driver in the country, so, I mean, it does give me a better chance, I mean, uh, racing against just the other Porsches and so forth. With him and a Cobra, why, uh... His, his problem will be just lasting, I guess, 500 miles and trying to beat a lot of the bigger cars, which he can probably do because the Cobras have proven in the past to be very reliable. Holbert Fields. Well, it's getting pretty close. And this, uh, this is a 500-mile race, so if anything can happen, really. It's, uh, we've got a good car and a good chance, but uh, you have to be running at the end of 500 miles to get any points. The Cobras started 1963 with a poor endurance record. Shelby feels now he's got that problem solved. But we're running 35, 40 hours on the cars without even overhauling them now, which uh, is phenomenal. That's even better than Ferrari is. Uh, uh, they've been reputed to be the most reliable cars, and uh, I think we've even got them beat on that now, so I'm not worried one, one bit about the 500 miles. In fact, I wish it were 1,000. But last year's Driver of the Year, Roger Penske, who beat Shelby's Cobras at Sebring in the same GTO Ferrari, sees things differently. Our car uh, is not quite as fast on the straightaways. We have an uphill straight here, and the Cobras can really go by us going up there. But I feel the braking going down into turn five will be uh, probably one of the problems that the Cobras will have after two or three hours. You know, at Sebring, Gurney and Hill came in after three hours of brake problems, and we're counting on it this today. We'll only make one pit stop. We'll run 250 miles, where the Cobras will have to stop two or three times. This will pick up oh, a number of seconds, because each time you're in the pits, of course, you lose anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half. Wester and his smaller engine Porsche can't run with a big iron, but nevertheless isn't worried about the long, hilly course. Oh, we're geared real good for it. I mean, it doesn't seem to bother us too much. We'll take it easy up the straights, I think, because we're geared a little little bit too low, and we'll pull 8,000 if we don't watch out. So we're going to try and hold it to 7,500. Bob Holbert's chances for the Drivers' Championship depend on the Cobra's reliability, especially with his closest competitor, Wester, in the endurance-proven Porsche. A Porsche is a heck of a good endurance car, which you know and I know. Uh, I feel the Cobra will hold up real well, too, but uh, we might have a little more competition in the over two-liter class, so again, we, uh, we've got to keep our foot in it, I guess, and hope for the best. In a field of 61 cars that includes everything from the brute force Cobras to the delicate Lotuses, from Elvis to Porsches, Lister Jags to E-Jags, the biggest question mark is a sleek combination of Elva body and Porsche engine. Milwaukee Porsche ace Bill Wiestoff who will handle a new combination, gives the details. Well, it's something that uh, is really completely new. The car uh, was developed in conjunction with uh, Carl Haas, Oliver Schmidt, and Frank Nichols, who is uh, Elva. And uh, the idea was conceived some time back, and they've been working on the car for about nine months to a year. 
This is the first of its type, and uh, it's running a the four-cylinder 1700 uh, fighter engine with a horizontal fan rather than the vertical fan. And we're using a stock uh, Porsche transmission, and this is all fitted into uh, the Elva chassis that's been set up to take this power and gearbox. The Road America circuit gives all the drivers in their cars a thorough test. Its demanding hills, challenging turns, and high-speed straights require strategy and endurance to win. Race day. Track announcer 20 Grand Steinbach gets things moving. So we wait for the signal from the bridge for that one-minute bomb. The warning cannon sounds. The cars are ready. The dialogue of the grid begins. No one allowed on the grid from this point on. Absolutely no one. Pace car takes them away. Once around the track, under and over two-liter sports cars first, followed by a second pace car leading the GT cars in the manufacturer's race. Once around the track for Bill Wiesoff, Don Wester, Harry Hoyer, Bob Holbrook, Chuck Castle, Don Devine. Once around for Dave McDonald, Roger Penske, Briggs Cunningham, Walt Hengsken, and then off under the flag. Chaparral is in front of the pace car into the stretch. It's Harry Hoyer in trouble before the race starts. A broken gear shift lever sends him to the pit. And here comes the pack. 60 cars, the last half mile under wraps, and then... Leap past the pace car and away. down the long straight through the speed trap. Bill Wiestoff maintains a starting position ahead of Chuck Castle as they wind through the S's toward the carousel turn. Wiestoff and Castle have passed Miles' more powerful machine in the tricky turn and now leads to the carousel turn and into the famous Canada corner. Roger Penske brings the GTO Ferrari through the pack as Wiestoff leads up the hill toward the bridge. Lap one completed. Wiestoff and Castle down the pit straight ahead of all the heavier machinery. Don Wester is out. Broken cam load just after the start. And now Miles has passed Wiestoff and Castle to take first place in the carousel turn. And that's the way they come through Canada Corner. Castle having passed Wiestoff to take second. McDonald and Spencer are pulling their Cobras through the pack. And there's plenty of action heading into the sharp turn atop the hill. Mm. Harry Hoyer charging to overcome his early gear shift problems is off the court. But in no trouble. And now Miles has begun to establish his lead. Wiestoff holds second, Castle third, and Penske fourth. And so they roll through the carousel, the 98 Cobra showing signs of staying in front all the way. The leaders chase through Canada Corner and up into Thunder Hollow, as the tempo of the race settles into a David and Goliath duel. Goliath, in this case, the powerful Shelby Cobra, being chased by a couple of Davids, the Wiestoff Elbow Porsche and Castle's Porsche Spider. And 
the scrambling still goes on farther back as the heavier machinery works its way past the under two liter cars. Miles Cobra, Wiesnoff's Elba Porsche and Castle's Porsche handle the ever-changing radius carousel turn beautifully as they stay in front of the pack. And now a new face works toward the front. Don Devine has pushed the Meister Browser Scarab through traffic and noses toward the leaders through Canada Corner. The action continues through Thunder Hollow as they roar three abreast toward the last turn into the pit straight. Californian Dave McDonald moves his Cobra toward the leaders and there's plenty of fighting for the inside at the corner. The Lister Corvette's close to flames and requires the ever-ready fire extinguisher to keep her from going. Meantime, Penske's dropped to sixth place, the result of an early pit stop. New York Porsche ace Herb Swan is hotly pursued by Ralph Salyer in a stingray. And the third Team Cobra, driven by Lou Spencer, has started making its move, passing Swan's Porsche en route to the front. A crowd of some 38,000 spread over the grassy knolls of Road America 500, seeing plenty of action, and the battle continues. Chuck Castle shows his Porsche's advantage on the turn as he sidesteps Frederick's Corvette. Spencer has really opened up his big Cobra and takes over sixth place at noon, with Cobra teammate Dave McDonald in 97 right behind through Thunder Hollow. Road America's specially constructed course throws every test of the drivers and their machines. They negotiate twisty uphill turns, high speed bends, and flat out straights for four grueling miles per lap. McDonald doesn't back off at all, shooting down the challenging carousel turn. And Chuck Castle battles to stay toward the top, his Porsche performing beautifully. Spencer is after Divine Scarab on the straight leading to the big turn. The Mecom Racing Team, GTO, with Penske at the wheel, maintaining its steady pace, moves back to fourth. Tom Payne's privately entered Cobra is considerably slower than the Shelby team due to gear trouble. And the race is closer than ever. Cobra speed versus Porsche maneuverability. Shelby calls Miles in with a 30-second lead over Wiesthoff. The race not quite halfway over. McDonald pits first and trades with co-driver Bob Bondurant, who gets away in fifth place. Lou Spencer, who's driving the race by himself, pits briefly for gas and tires, pulls out in sixth position. Miles comes in after almost three hours of driving, during which he took over first and lengthened his lead over We Stop to 30 seconds. But it's a major pit stop. Gas, tires, and brakes. Bob Hobart is still in the pit when Wiestoff, who pitted just for four miles but for only two and one half minutes, roars back in first. Spencer has lost his untightened front wheel and runs the whole course on his disc. Bob Hobart prepares to take over, but the brake pad change is going slowly, and Wiestoff builds up a healthy lead before an exasperated Hobart finally charges back, now behind more than a lap. We saw the lead is short lived as Don Yenko, now driving the Meister Browser Scarab, grabs first with some flat out driving. The race better than halfway through and corner cruiser covering oil spot. Herb Swan slips in the Canada corner but regains the track without a trace of hay. Luke Steer has similar trouble. And things get a bit loose. but straightens himself out without damage. And Bob Holbert, determined to win the driver's championship, is revenging his overlong pit stop. Augie Paps has taken over the GTO, but after a seven-minute pit stop, he has a long way to go. Bon Durant and Bill Dietrich, now driving the 73 Porsche, are hard at each other at Canada Corner. 
Hobart's not to be denied. He's after Wiestoff, who has now regained the lead from Yenko's faltering Scarab. Wiestoff's untested combination of elbow body and Porsche engine is performing beautifully as he fights to stay in front. But Hobart's faster Cobra has chopped Wiestoff's lead to three seconds. And Hobart gets by Wiestoff just before Canada Corner and stretches it out up on Thunder Hollow with first place the only thing in his mind. The Scarab's brief glory, first for 17 laps, ends as the engine blows with Don Devine at the wheel. And that ends it for the Meister Browser team. Boyer's early troubles took him out before halfway, although he was faster through the speed trap at 150 miles per hour than anyone before his car gave off. McDonald is back at the wheel of the 97 Cobra, intent on moving up from his fifth position. Hobart is beginning to add daylight to his lead as he shows Don Sussler and Bill Weeks off the way. Hobart is in perfect stride. His car, no problem now. Better than a third of the starters are now out of the race. Sideline with serious brake trouble, blown engines, oil leaks, faulty gearboxes. Road America 500 exact its toll. Only the perfectly set up cars survive. Penske is back in the Mekong GTO now, but after an overlong pit stop to change drivers, tires, and work on a slipping clutch, he's got a long push to get back in the running. Young Dave McDonald, fresh from his rest, pours it on to work himself into the same lap with Sessler, who's now third. And as fatigue becomes a factor, driving becomes a little more ragged. Lap times increase as car and driver wear under the punishment of high-speed driving. Doug Thames, Dino Ferrari moves toward the front. The young Milwaukeean sixth in the point standings has worked to ninth place. And the Cunningham team Jaguars are taking advantage of the mortality rate and their perfectly tuned cars. Walt Hanskin, driving with Paul Richards, has brought the number 61 E-Jag to a seventh place slot as the race grinds on into the 70th lap. Colbert, meantime, has built up a 20-second lead over Wiestock with his foot in it all the way. The Porsche team of Castle and Sessler have their sleek silver number 73 in a real dog fight with Dave McDonald's number 97 Cobra. McDonald closing the gap every lap. Farther back, Lou Spencer seems unaffected by his solo driving chore and keeps pressure on McDonald for that fourth spot. But McDonald's got his eye on Sussler's Porsche just in front of him and continues his flat out exhibition. in the race. The sleek number 37, Bobsy 2, driven by Chuck Dietrich and Don Wolf, shows its form and moves into the top 10. Up front, Holbert has brought the 98 Cobra in for Miles to take over after a brake pad change. Hobart's 10 tenths driving has given the Cobra a 30 second lead over second place Wiestoff Elvo Porsche. But that slim margin is quickly lost as another complicated pit session keeps Miles in for over five minutes. But Wiestoff's in too. He surrenders his car to Augie Pat, who drove earlier with Penske in the GTO Ferrari and instructs him briefly on the unfamiliar car. It's just a two minute pit stop and Pat takes over in first place. Miles, frustrated from losing the lead in the pit, puts his foot in it to make up the lost time. Watch this battle as Miles tries to catch up with less than an hour left in the race. Passing Pap just before Canada Corner. They're in the same lap now. 
but Miles is behind two minutes. Augie Papps keeps the Elba Porsche smoothly in front. The checkered flag only minutes ahead. And Papps will not be caught as he takes the last straight before the final turn at top speed. And then, the checkered flag from Bud Severn, first in Road America's 500 history for an under two liter car. Miles took the checker 58 seconds behind Pat. Castle and Sessler's Porsche third, and in fourth, the Cobra of Dave McDonald and Bob Bondurant. Ollie Schmidt and Jim Nichols, who supplied the idea, engine and body, helped push their creation to the victory circle. Starter Bud Severn hands over the familiar victory token with everyone's congratulations for a history-making performance. Wiestoff and Papp, the winners. Bill Wiestoff handled the car for 84 laps, giving it to Papp for the finish. They own first place for 54 out of the 125 laps of the race. Average 84.44 miles per hour. Second overall and first in the over two liter was the Holbert Miles Cobra. They had three more first place laps than the winners, but had too many long pit stops to overcome. Colbert and Miles finished 58 seconds behind Wiestoff and Papp. 12 minutes in the pits, just too much of a handicap. Nevertheless, Carroll Shelby and his Cobras win the Manufacturer's Championship, and the new driver's champ is Bob Holbert, the first champion of the new United States Road Racing Championship. What about Cobra's endurance? Well, I still feel good about that. I mean, they are very reliable. We had a little brake trouble today, which is uh, nothing to do. This is just a, a real tough course on brakes, and... Uh, we had to make two brake pad changes, which uh, really cost us the overall win, I imagine. Uh, we lost two laps of each change, and uh, we just couldn't quite make up the last one. So we were a minute short at the end. Well, for, for technical reasons, Bob and I are driving one of the older cars, which still has small brakes. And um, if, if we had had time, we would have prepared one of the later series of cars that has much bigger brakes, and we wouldn't have had this trouble. A clean sweep for Bill Wiestoff and Augie Papp in an historic Road America 500.